Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing some peaceful self-care and I'm taking you along on my day. This is how I dig a little deeper on self-care and focus on some things that are good for me mentally, physically, and emotionally. May is Mental Health Awareness Month and I know that in many cases there is still a stigma around therapy and getting counseling. If there is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, I think it's brave and honorable to speak to a professional and get the help that you need. I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video for Mental Health Awareness Month. BetterHelp will help assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating with someone within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, but it's professional counseling done securely online. They have a wide range of expertise, so you can be matched with a counselor that will be a good fit for you that you might not be able to find locally or in your area. So when you first go on the app, they ask you a few questions about yourself just to get to know you a little bit better to help match you to the right counselor. You can sign in at any time and schedule appointments for phone, text, or video. It is available worldwide. It's less expensive than traditional offline therapy, and they do also offer financial aid. If you're interested in finding a counselor through BetterHelp, go to betterhelp.com slash Talbot to get 10% off your first month. When it comes to self-care, I believe that taking care of our mental health, our emotional well-being, and our spiritual health are the top priority. In today's video, I want to share with you some of my favorite ways for self-care. With everything happening in the world and everything we see in the media, I know that it can be very overwhelming. I get very anxious, you know, with family members dealing with illnesses, with things happening in our personal lives. It can feel um, a lot on some days. It can feel very, very heavy. Nature has always been a source of peace for me. From the time I was a little child, I would go outside and read a book and listen to the birds and be out with the flowers because they always made me happy. I always appreciated how plants and flowers made me feel, bringing them from the outside in. Also, we give flowers to those who are hurting, to those who are healing because they are so uplifting, and I truly believe that they're healing. Back before we were able to grow flowers, I used to save and budget to pick them up at a local farmer's market or a grocery store, and I always loved bringing plants and flowers into the home to create sanctuary and also give them, offer them to others as an offering. So now that we grow them, we grow these beautiful Edens along our fence line and I grow lavender for um, Pacific time for the bath bombs. It's a part of my daily ritual, especially in the spring when we have tons of flowers to pick them and bring them in the home or offer them to others. Um, we have these hollyhocks that my mom gave me seeds from her garden. We're also growing a lot of produce and vegetables. Right now we're sort of moving into our summer season, so we'll have lots of watermelons and we have strawberries right now and tomatoes. And then we planted a little mini orchard. We have nets covering them right now so that they don't get destroyed by bugs. But um, we have our herb garden. We started with just a small little herb garden on our balcony when we lived in our apartment and now we just keep growing and growing and growing and uh, I, I'm going to do an updated tour very soon but I find my peace in nature if I go on a hike or I go to the beach or I'm out in nature and I've just tried to make this space um, as much beautiful nature as possible and just spend as much time with plants as I can and I truly believe that they heal us, um, not only by consuming them, but by just being amongst them. Mm -hmm. 
This is the jasmine that smells so beautiful in the beginning of the summer. Jasmine always reminds me again of my childhood because uh, it always reminded me that the end of the school year was, you know, the school was coming to an end and it was time for summer to begin. And still to this day, when I smell jasmine, that's what I think. So I'd say pretty much every day, especially in the spring, I have a lot of beautiful roses from the rose garden to bring in to put throughout the house. Usually I do it first thing in the morning after I've had a cup of coffee or tea, um, after I've fed the boys breakfast. Usually Oliver is, he gets up and goes to his school, so he's got Zoom school still this year. Uh, because of quarantine, so we're finishing up the first grade on Zoom. <laughs> but um, yeah, once he's all set up for school, I go out and pick some roses and put them around the house. I like those little details, those little touches like flowers, plants, candles, and I find that I can stay on top of cleaning my home if I really stay on top of daily chores, just sort of doing a once through clean every week um, and then also maintaining you know, the laundry, keeping the kitchen as clean as possible. So um, today I'm sort of just resetting. I film this on the weekend. I usually always film on the weekends because that's when I have the time to do it. And so I usually am doing my reset on the weekends where I'm cleaning the entire house. Today I just filmed a little video of me sort of reorganizing the kitchen. And this week I did an okay job at sort of staying on top of everything and the house stayed pretty clean the whole week. So I was happy about that. And then just bringing in those little details, those little finishing touches really make um, a difference. So creating a sanctuary, creating a space that clutter free and a place that you feel like you can think, I know that that makes me feel a lot happier and opens me up to creativity as well.
One thing I really enjoy doing, especially when I'm cleaning and I feel has really helped me, is either listening to growth and development books or I like to be on Clubhouse. Clubhouse is a really cool new app where it's kind of like a podcast, but where the people who are on it can converse and talk back and forth. So I listen to a lot of uh, you know things that are going on in the world. I like to hear about different people's perspectives. I don't really talk a lot in um, when I listen in, but I listen to what other people have to say. There's many different topics from politics to world religions to current events, but there's also rooms where they discuss mental health, um, self-care, They'll have professionals and doctors in different rooms. There's also rooms on gardening. I mean, there's so many different topics. So I like to listen in on Clubhouse or a book while I'm cleaning, which really helps me sort of get through my cleaning and my chores. And then also, um, I recently got something called a habit journal. Now you can do this without a journal like this, but this journal is pretty cool because it comes with like 50 pages before you get into the actual journal. And it's like a book breaks down the concept of habit forming and habit loops. It discusses some statistics and also some uplifting quotes. And then it goes into detail about how to create these habits based on your own personal goals. Once you've established your long-term goals, you can create daily habits that can help you achieve those goals. So that's sort of what this is. And then it discusses foundational habits, habit stacking, So like I mentioned a little earlier, when I'm cleaning or doing chores, I like to listen to a book um, on personal growth and development, and you're sort of able to get two things done at once. So I, you know, have to clean the house. That's a part of my routine. Sometimes that can be very mundane. So that would be an idea or an example of habit stacking in my own life. So identifying goals in all of the areas of your life, not just one, because You know, we know that sometimes people will make goals in one area like success or finances, um, but then they haven't made goals when it comes to relationships or personal development. They had health and finances, but they also had relationships, adventure, service, environment, and lifestyle. I really appreciated that because I feel like well-rounded goals make for a well-rounded life. So... Um, It also prompts you to journal every day. I don't do it every single day, but I like that it sort of asks you how you're feeling. It asks you to create a gratitude list, um, sort of keeps you accountable to, you know, daily habits that are helping you move closer to your goals. Um, And also journaling is really helpful if you are in counseling or in therapy. It's really good to look back on your pages and have something to discuss. So... I like journaling for so many different reasons. I think it's very important to, you know, get our thoughts on paper, to get our goals on paper, and also to keep ourselves accountable with creating habits. This is really where we can make change in our life. Once it becomes a habit, journaling can take anywhere from just a few minutes, three to 10 minutes, or you can sit and journal for a while as long as you want. It's really up to you, but I do love to be able to sort of look back to remind myself, of course, always what I'm grateful for, what I'm thankful for, um, to see the days where sometimes I go in the ebbs and flows of emotions. Journaling can help you stay present and it can help you stay committed to your goals, so I love to journal as a part of my routine. Deep breathing has become something that I focus on more. When I was taking my Herbal Academy class, there was a whole segment on deep breathing and breath work. So of course, one deep breath in through the nose and out. Um, Also, you can do two quick breaths in and out. Sort of like after you're done crying, you know, that... um, You could do that with one breath out. So there's a few different ways, but just um, being present with the breath and learning to breathe deeply and create rhythm with the breath uh, can be very, very helpful, especially if you suffer from anxiety or you're trying to be in the present moment. So um, I like deep breathing as well. It's very, very powerful.
during deep breathing and just after, I think about the concept of surrendering. And that's usually when I'll pray. Some will find meaning in prayer and some can just find meaning in the concept of surrendering what we can't control, what we don't have control over. And that's usually when I pray because sometimes when I feel powerless to what's happening in the world or in life, um, I choose to surrender and know that I can't possibly control everything. And I choose to pray personally because it gives me faith and hope in something bigger. So for the adventure category in my journal, I put at the top of the goals to go camping more with the kids and as a family. And we love being in nature together. And so we're actually going to be visiting a few different places this summer. So I'm flipping through a book of some of the locations we're going to visit. Also for personal growth, listening to books is a really great way to get a lot of book reading in. I like to read physical books and I like to read on my Kindle. But I started listening to this book, The Compound Effect, which had a lot of great takeaway. I'm listening to a few other books right now, and I usually listen on my way to the studio since that's kind of a long drive. And also when I'm cleaning outside or inside when I'm doing chores, and I get a lot of reading in that way. I personally feel best when I am constantly growing. And so I try to grow in every area of my life because I know that I don't want to stay stagnant. I want to grow mentally, physically, spiritually, and continue to for the rest of my life. So I will always work towards music. I will always try to become better. It's almost like a form of meditation, especially as I've started to work on more classical pieces and get better with my sight reading. I read chord charts and write chord charts for my own songs, but there is something really powerful about the practice of reading music and focusing on reading and playing and practicing. It's just, it's something that I grew up listening to because my father was very dedicated to his work and I loved it. I have very, very fond memories of listening to him practice throughout my childhood. And so it's something that I wanna recreate in my own life. Animals are incredibly healing and, uh, you know, I could sit and watch my chickens all day. If I had the time, I would just sit with a cup of iced tea and watch my animals just graze and enjoy life. I try to make time every single day to give each of my animals love and attention. And animals and plants and humans all need love and attention. And when they're given love and attention, you see a response and a reciprocation. I truly believe animals offer us healing and they help us stay in the present. Um, it's been amazing to raise our children around animals, to teach our children about respect and boundaries when it comes to animals. And I can tell that the animals bring a lot of meaning to my children's lives as well, um, which was how I felt growing up. I had, I was very close with all of my animals and I loved my animals and, um, just I couldn't really imagine life at this point without them. We had many years when we first got married that we lived in apartments where you couldn't have animals so that was sort of frustrating and I always wanted them but we were patient we waited and now we have plenty. <laughs> so um, so yeah this is our dog mate giving hugs to Byron and Byron always knows like his exact spot that he loves to be scratched and we talk like a bunch of like <laughs> it's sort of embarrassing the way we talk to our animals but but they're just so cute. Now we can't forget a spa moment because I love to have a good bath, a good shower, a good moment of hygiene and self-care or as a part of my self-care routine, which is why I created these Pacific Time bath bombs. And what are, in my opinion, the best bath bombs ever, because not only do these bath bombs relax you, unlike any other bath bomb you will ever experience, but they are incredible for your skin and they're good for the environment. You can compost the box, and when you get out of the bath, you don't need anything on your skin. No lotion, no oil, your skin feels and smells amazing. 
I take a bath usually about once a month, so I save these for a very special occasion. I'm actually gonna take the water as it's getting warm and I'm gonna water my plants because I love to have live plants in my bathroom just to sort of create that spa environment. I'm gonna do an updated spa bathroom video just to share a few different ways to create a zen space in your bathroom, no matter what the size, because I know some people do not even have a bathtub, and for many years I didn't either. So you can create the spa feel with a shower. As a, as a matter of fact, I shower more than I bathe. So I love a good shower, but um, just creating that time, especially if you're not feeling well, emotionally or physically, it's great to take that time to, um, to heal and to take care of yourself. And the CBD is very healing and beneficial to our skin and our bodies overall. This is my updated peaceful self-care video. I wanted to go a little deeper with this one and then I'll be back with some more self-care pampering videos very soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep your eyes out for more gardening videos, some more home videos coming as well. And I hope you enjoyed this one. If you enjoy my channel, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And yeah, I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.